What's up, YouTube? We are going to propagate some daffodils and we're going to propagate some strawberries today. Stick around. This is my tool of choice a serrated shovel. This thing's called the Root Buster. It's got a sharp edge, serrated edge, and it can just really cut through uh, anything you want. Perfect for especially strawberries, but it's perfect for pretty much anything. Ignore the mess, I'm building a pond. Get off my case. All right, first step is to try to find some. Here's some coming up right now. You want to ideally get them before this, but this will do. This is a comfrey plant, so I'm gonna propagate comfrey as I cut into the ground, but I'm cool with that. I like comfrey. Here's some more. All right, so let's dig it up. All right, this is going to be tricky one-handed. So I'm a big fan of minimizing the disturbance. Disturb only what you need to. So I dig down and under, and then as I lift the shovel, I'm going to just try to tease these out. All right, and this is what you're going to get. Now, if these clump up too much, then they're going to have a problem flowering. They're going to actually stop flowering and they'll only put out green growth. So you you want to split these uh, maybe every couple years. Okay, now we're going to just tease these apart. Ah, Alright, so now we're just going to tease these apart. And you do that by just splitting it a little bit, cracking it. You see it'll actually just crack a little bit of it. And then you're just going to kind of pull them apart. Okay, so now you're just gonna tease these apart, and what you do basically is you just kind of crack them, okay, and then you're just gonna kind of pull them apart, okay, and they'll each have their own root system. You just crack it enough to break this little small small spot there, and they'll each come with some roots. This one got a bit damaged. Okay, just crack it, and then kind of tease it apart slowly. Just kind of wiggling it as you do. A little crack, wiggle it, tease it apart. rest all right look at that one tiny little clump one two three four five six seven eight I could possibly tease that I'll leave it nine okay now to plant them again I want minimal disturbance so what I do is I just take the shovel I step on it I slide it forward Okay, and then what you're gonna get is a nice little hole, but you're also gonna get a smooth edge here. So I don't actually like roots sitting on a smooth edge. So what I then do is I take this, it's gonna be hard to do one-handed, and I kind of just break into it, soften the dirt, rub the dirt around it, pull the shovel out. This is way messier one-handed. Recover the roots, give it a nice little firm press, recover it with wood chips, always the ground is mulched, and then you want to water this as soon as possible. What Watering it will push that sand down against the roots, get the sand right against the roots, pull that air down and out of it, and it'll help the plant kind of get established. Now the watering step, again, we want to stack efficiencies, we want to do things smart. So what I actually did is I'm doing this now, it's about to pour this afternoon rain, tons of rain. So that will do my job for me. So I'm just going to propagate these things out and then the rain itself will do that big flush for me. That saves me a whole lot of work, we've got to work smart. And there we go, 10 daffodils in a clump. I like to clump them together, I just think it looks better big clump of color here, a clump of color there. I really like that look. Here's more from what I did at 5.30 in the morning. More here. More here. Propagated everywhere. And we did this whole front area. Here's the front of my house. Here is the road. This is where people come walking um, every day. People walk here all the time. So I did this food forest strip for people to just kind of snack and eat. And I put clovers and 
strawberries all along this front edge. And then this whole edge, you can see. I did this in the morning here. So this is just cram packed with stuff. And it's gonna pop off, it's gonna look absolutely fantastic. Propagated some pass caps, dug those up, these I stool layered. Free plants, guys. Just gotta get started. Okay, so let's talk money. Those daffodils that I planted, I got those for about uh, 50 cents a bulb. Uh, locally, grow locally, I can get it a little cheaper. Um, usually I order from somewhere like Rex Bulbs in Holland. I, I want to keep a nice local, low carbon footprint. 50 cents a bulb. I think I bought maybe 10, 10 bulbs. I've been dividing them out and I have somewhere around like 500 bulbs now. I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. They're absolutely everywhere. I can pot those up. I can sell them at the end of my driveway for 50 cents a bulb. You saw the work. 30 seconds, dig it up. Nine bulbs, pot those up, that's four bucks. Four bucks for five minutes of work is ridiculous. Now, let's talk. Why is a dude who's growing food I'll talk to you about propagating daffodils. It's kind of weird, don't you think? Let's talk about it. This channel, the whole thing I talk about is we don't grow plants, we grow soil. The plants come as a consequence of healthy soil. So if we are constantly growing soil and soil microbiology, then we have healthier plants. Now I want you to look at this. And let's talk about why I am growing daffodils. Let's pretend you're a bacteria or a nematode that lives in this area. The bacteria want to eat sugars in the soil and the nematodes want to eat the bacteria. If you are a bacteria in the soil right now, what are you eating? You're eating absolutely nothing. When plants are green, their leaves have chlorophyll. When their leaves have chlorophyll and they're green and they're open to the sun and the sun is shining, they're performing photosynthesis. Part of that photosynthesis reaction is the carbon sugar side of the output, which means the plants are taking carbon out of the air and they're mixing it with water and they're producing complex carbohydrate sugars, which they pump into the soil, into the roots, and it's those uh, complex carbs that the bacteria feeds off of. So when plants are green and they have leaves, bacteria has food. When the bacteria has food and they're eating, they're multiplying and they're growing. And that's food for every single other thing in the chain. The nematodes now have food because they have bacteria to eat. The ma macro arthropods have food because they have nematodes to eat. The birds have food because they have macro arthropods to eat. It's a big long chain and it starts with photosynthesis. So our goal when we're building these resilient systems is we want to have photosynthesis happening at all times. So why do I care about daffodils? Because daffodils come up early, they're coming up right now, nothing else is up. You can see the other place, it's all brown wood chips, nothing coming up. Clover's coming up, dandelion's coming up, daffodils are coming up. Photosynthesis is happening, I'm growing my soil for a longer period of time. That is why this dude who's growing food is also propagating flowers and daffodils. When the spring rains come and the snow melts, what matters is storing that uh, water inside your soil. That's why I have these swales here. That's why I have these swales here to capture, hold, store that water. But what's really important is that there's roots in the ground and the roots are sucking that water up turning it into biological material in the leaves of the plant. These plants then take that water, they store it in their leaves as, biolo as biological material. So the daffodils act as an early spring nutrient accumulator and water accumulator. They'll grow big flowers, big leaves, and then they'll die back just before the apple trees blossom. When they die back, they're gonna take all the nutrient in the leaves, they're gonna jam it back down into the bulb to swell the bub bulb and survive until next season. But at the same time, right at that bulb layer where it's touching the soil, 
it's got a membrane that protects it. That membrane is not perfect. Some of the nutrient is going to leach out through the membrane via osmosis. So some of that nutrient that's being stored in that bulb is then being transferred back into the soil microbiology. So the more early spring ephemeral plants that you have, and I could be butchering, butchering ephemeral, forgive me for that, but the more early spring plants you have that are coming up, the more nutrient you're capturing early in the season, and that's going to translate into healthier soil. Because if you look at any given year, you zoom out, and you calculate how much photosynthesis this square area of land performed, if you're not performing photosynthesis right now, you're wasting the opportunity to create sugars in your soil and grow soil life. This is why early season is important, and it's also why late season will also sow in stuff like winter rye to keep that photosynthesis machine going and keep building our soil. All right, now I know I promised you that we would do strawberries and daffodils, but unfortunately the video is already about eight minutes long. I know that people have an attention span of like two and a half minutes. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna split this video into two. I'll do another video. I'll release it today as well, um, but I'm gonna split it. We'll do a strawberry video as well because I really wanna nail these strawberries and nail down um, the idea to you guys that you're photocopying money and you're photocopying wealth. So if you just like this video, get out there, start your garden today. Come back in later on, check out the strawberry video. We're gonna make hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of free strawberries. We're gonna propagate strawberries, propagate food, stick around. Love you guys, thanks for the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Keep commenting, I love them.